and we seek his help, and we ask his forgiveness. We put our complete faith and trust in him. Mighty and sublime is he. I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah alone, the one and only. There is none like unto him. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad is Allah's servant, messenger prophet to all of mankind. We ask Allah's peace, his blessings, his highest exaltations be upon Prophet Muhammad, upon his family, his companions, the righteous all. On you, O Muslim, be peace. We greet you again in the beautiful language of the Quran. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Abu Mubad and what follows of this excellent salutation or salute to Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and the peace be on him. Dear Muslim, I advise you as well as myself to fear Allah and obey Allah. Have taqwa, have the highest regard for God and obey God. Dear believers, our talk for this Juma Putba or lecture is Al Mu'minun, the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is God, the sacred and the mighty, says in his holy book, the Quran, and this is Abdullah Yusuf Ali translation. It says the believers must eventually win through. Those who humble themselves in prayers and who avoid pardon me, who avoid vain talk, who are active in deeds of charity, who abstain from sex except with those joined to them in the marriage bond or the captives whom their right hands possess. For in their case, they are free from, bank, free from blame. But those whose desires exceed those limits are transgressors. Those who faithfully observe their trust and covenants and who strictly guard their prayers. These will be the heirs who will inherit paradise. They will dwell therein forever. Sadiq Allahu Adin. Allah the Almighty spoke the truth. This is Al Al Hadith from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The prayers and the peace be on him. Abu Haraya. God bless him. Related that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said. Belief is some 60 or 70 branches, the least of which is the removal of harm from roads. And, and the top is saying, there is no God but Allah. Let me read that again. <clears throat> I'm going to have a little cough today. The prophet said, Belief is some 60 or 70 branches, 
the least of which is the removal of harm from roads. And the top is saying there is no God but Allah. So who so he so he, God bless him, related that Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, said, How wonderful the believer's lot is. His lot is all good. Nobody says the believers is as such. If bestowed with pleasant occurrence, he would thank God, and that would be good for him. And if afflicted with misfortune, he would keep patient, and that would be good for him. According to Al Abbas ibn Ab, God bless him, Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, said, He feels the taste of belief, who admits. Allah is Lord, Al-Islam as religion, and Muhammad as messenger of Allah. Anas, God be pleased with him, related that Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, said, three sentiments, if found together in a person, he would taste the sweetness of belief that Allah and his messenger would be more favored to him than anything else. That when he liked someone, he would like only for the sake of Allah. And that he would hate to return to disbelief as he hates to be thrown into the fire. And this is some commentary <clears throat> from uh, Imam W. D. Muhammad in Majedit. He says, belief. One, feeling, trying to be strong enough to move up to the knowledge form. Feeling, belief, and faith. A movement or effort to gain hold on knowledge. Now, be patient with me, no we. You know, we're laying the foundation for some further remarks. So we're going to go back to the Quran now. Yusuf Ali translation. And keep in mind that the translation is not the Quran. Remember, Muhammad said, you can choose any <coughs> translation but the one that he recommends is the Yusuf Ali translation. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us to make some commentary on this surah, Al Mukminun, the believers. And this is our, you know, we, we don't know when we choose a subject. We don't know who's going to do it. We don't know who's going to be present. But Allah knows. Even before we think about what we're going to do, Allah already knows what we're going to do. So we, we, we chose this subject today. The believers. And you know that Allah says in the Quran on this day, it's like the Juma, that, that the believers, uh, they leave off traffic and trade. Yeah, that's how. That's one immediate way for the believers to distinguish. They don't get caught up in preoccupation, right? So this this is the day we're here. Allah bless us to be here for Salat Juma, and so we we are we are by, by, by all means we we are definitely the blessed ones. We the blessed ones. Now the very first ayat of this story of Menum. So 23. The very first ayat in many times is very much quoted wrong and misunderstood when you read only the translation. And it says 
This is what the translation says. The believers must eventually win through. That, now that's true. Still, that is not what a loss of Panaguatala says in his hand. A loss of Panaguatala revealed to his messenger Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this. Cut aflihau mu'minu. Some other translations say, successful are the believers. And, and all that's good. So that's, that's acceptable. That's true. But the key word in the Arabic is kat. This is a word that means that the believers are already successful. In Arabic grammar, the word kat is in something that's already taken place already. It's different between eventually. No, God is saying the believers are already successful. They're already successful. And we're, going to, and we're going to try to establish that, and inshallah, with God's help. So the question can be asked, and should be asked, and probably so can be asked. Why are the believers already successful? That's a fair question. If God says, cut after have mu'minun, and it means that the believers are already successful, then it's this proper thing to ask yourself. Why are the believers already successful? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us who they are and gives us a clear and defined formula for that success. Make sense? Not only does God say that if you're a believer, you are already successful, but he don't leave you, God don't leave you like that. God doesn't present anything to you or, 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 or show you anything without giving you understanding and guidance on it. You only have to just look forward and listen to it and learn it. So, in very plain and simple but profound language. This is what God says. Now we're going to have to go back to the Quran again. The later foundation for the comments that we're going to make, inshallah. And then we'll be able to get out of here, inshallah. Now you see, we have a uh, and it's noteworthy of point uh, now. You see, we have somewhat of a thin humor at press, but that's, 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 that's good. That just shows lack of consciousness of those who are, are not present. That just shows uh, their lack of respect for this, 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 this most sacred and auspicious day and time. That just shows that they're not practicing their religion, they're not practicing their, their demon. It just shows that they're not, they don't feel an obligation to Almighty God. Though they say that they're Muslim. That's, a, that's what they show. And many, many other things. But none of them are good. But Allah has blessed us to be here with Salatu Juma. If, in our case, that's the most important thing that can happen. Because whatever is being said, it's, 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 it's for you. And it's, and it's for me. And we can tell somebody about it later on. We can get a CD or tape, and they may benefit from it better than we benefit from it, according to what the prophecy said, peace be upon it. So let's, 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 look, let's look at, uh, let's look at uh, a commentary from these ideas. But let's make it our first. A lot more. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, the Rabbilah, the meaning. All the perfect praise is for God, the Lord of all the worlds. So, I yet want, it says, and this is translation again, 
It said the believers must eventually win through. Now, even if you don't know the Arabic, if you read that, whoever read that in English, if they call themselves a believer, whether they're Muslim, Christian, or Jew, or whatever, that would be encouraging to them. Because whatever situation they would be in, if it wasn't favorable and they wanted to get past that, then God would be saying to them, eventually it, you will win through if you're a believer. And the reason why you would win through is because the, the, the hallmark of a believer is one who has faith. You don't know, you can't see, you're not in control of it, but if you're a believer, then, then you have faith that God is going to bring you through whatever you're going through. So, once you accept to become Muslim by making your declaration of faith, and faith enters into your heart, you become a believer. Now, keep this in mind. But this is part of the problem that we have in, in our thinking in society right now and around the world. Everyone who says that he or she is a Muslim is not a believer. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to his followers at that time, and it's for us, don't say that you are a believer because faith has not entered into your heart. So you can become a Muslim, take the claim of Shadatan, come in right, right here, and then you go right on back out there and keep on doing what you were doing before you came in. Because the deen has not entered into your heart. And Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Quran was revealed on his heart. See, it wasn't in it on his intellectual, because his, his, his intelligence, on his body. But I revealed the Quran on his heart, which means that you ain't going to accept this religion and live right unless your heart is right. And no one can see your heart but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we can see your deeds. So when we see you not coming to Juma, not paying zakat, not coming to the ears, not, giving, not getting married, if you're able to get married, we know your heart ain't right. God already knows it. So the prophet told them, when they said they were believers, he said, no, don't say you're a believer. They say you're Muslim, because belief has not entered into your heart. <laughs> Make sense? So then it says, those who humble themselves and their prayers. Now this is what Imam Muhammad said. Not like this right here. This right here. He said, the believers know when God is working in their lives. That one little quote right there. I, I kept that. He said, the believers know when God is working in their lives. Quote, unquote. The believers, they are sincere in their prayers, seeking Allah's guidance, mercy, and protection. The believer is not too proud to beg God for help. Now, you know, a lot of people, they, they, don't, they don't pray regular. They, they don't pray at home. They don't come to the Jumar regularly. Because they don't, they don't believe in God's guidance. They don't believe that they, need, that they need God's help. They're too caught up in the world and too preoccupied and sometimes too, too, too arrogant to even bow down and pray. But the believer, he or she knows when God is working in their lives. And it goes on to say about these believers. 
It says, who avoid vain talk. So the believers, they don't involve themselves in, in unnecessary gossip and talk and rhetoric. A believer is not involved. A believer does not involve his or herself with the company of those who do not remember God in their speech. The Prophet said, if you sit or stand without mentioning God, nothing that you say is accepted. When you sit down and start talking, the first thing you need to do is start missing the law. Allah said this, Allah said this, Alhamdulillah. When you get up, the same way. We thank Allah for this, we thank Allah for that. Let's make dua, whatever. Then what you are saying is a consequence. But if you sit down in any crowd and just talking, just running your mouth, and nothing you're saying is of no consequence, and, and, and it will not be of any effect of any good to you whatsoever. You won't get no benefit from it whatsoever. No matter what advice you gave, no matter what advice you receive, if you don't mention God's name, Prophet said peace be upon it essentially, it don't mean a thing. We, we need to keep our tongues wet with the memories of a God. And Allah said in the Quran, Wa dikra Allahu Akbar, to remember God is the greatest thing in life. Some people are intimidated in the world today. They're afraid they even mention God. They're, they're afraid even that people know they to be, that they believe in God. They may be on their jobs or whatever, but afraid that people know they believe in God. Feel, feel that they'll be outcasts. People will, will see them different. Oh, and, and, for, and, don't, and God forbid, people won't like them. So they just be quiet. They acquiesce their responsibility. But that's not the way to believe. The believer always will find a way to get in there, you know, thank God. God have mercy on me. May God bless you. You don't have to be a Muslim. You can be anybody. The, the, the believers are always going to have these characteristics. They always are going to mention God and, and remember God so that God will, will be there. Because Allah said in the Quran, when it's, when it's two of you together and you mention his name, he's the third. And is it four of you together and you mention his name, he's the fifth. So when you mention God's name, you, you invoke all of his mercy and blessing and protection and guidance on you. Because you don't act as though you have knowledge and you're in control of anything. You, you, you're not rebellious. That's the way the shaitan was. See, shaitan was stop the root, meaning he refused to bow down. All of the angels bow down, right? When God said he's going to make a man, he was going to make Adam our father. And he told all of them, now that I have created Adam, all of you bow down, and all the angels bow down, but not so Iblis. He was among the arrogant, the haughty, the rebellious. He would not bow down. And that's how the people are today. A lot of them, they won't submit to the will of God. They won't bow down. They won't give themselves over to Almighty God. Like we do when we fall down on our hands and our knees and then our, our head which is the highest part of us, saying that we, we, we recognize that we submit that the loss of what tell is the one who created us, the one who gave us a chance to stand up, the one who blessed us to be able to bend over, to come back up again, and the one who blessed us to go back down on our knees and our hands and put our forehead on the ground and, and, and recognize that, that nothing is bigger than God. And then God will stand you back up again. Most people, They'll find anything to do other than do that. They'll, they'll be on their knees praying. When they have a problem, they'll cry out to them, Almighty God. But most of them cannot give their complete self over to Almighty God. The way we do as believers, as Muslims. <clears throat> and even in their holy books, the scriptures, if they read, it will tell them 
that Christ Jesus, peace be upon him, that he went over to the tree and he bowed down on his knees and his face. Says it in the Holy Book. Jesus' form of praying was the same way that our form of praying is right now. And the people of the book, the wise, they already know all that. But it's, that's not, not consistent with their, with, with, with their agenda. Which is to keep the people's minds away from the truth of Almighty God so, they can, so that they can continue to exploit them and use them for their benefit. To get, to get wealthy off of, to control the education, to control the monetary system, to control the health system, education system, transportation system, to control it so that you, if you're not conscious, you won't get your share of this material world. Because Allah said, seek the afterlife with all the beings that are available to you. But don't forget your share of this dunya, of this material world. They don't want that. They want their share and they want your share too. And as long as they can keep you ignorant and dumb and preoccupied off a majority of pure D nonsense, they will exploit you, use you, and you'll work for them and work in their life and live in their life and won't even know it. And you'll be happy working on a job, making money, and, and then taking it right, right back to him. And the Honorable Muhammad said that the white man, he took the best part of the earth for himself. Didn't he, Abdullah? Yes, sir. And if you look at white folks, they're living all, right to this day, they're living all the best parts right now. I don't care if you go to California, I don't care if you go to Philadelphia, you can go to the stinky, raggedy Baltimore. And they got a part in Baltimore that if you get blindfolded, you won't even know you're in Baltimore. Palatial mansions, well-kept lawns, groom dogs. You be in Baltimore. You won't be over there where Frederick Bay got killed there. Where is that at? They don't go over there. That's, that area ain't nothing for, but for all African-American, uneducated, unfortunate blacks. But you can be in Baltimore. I can put you in the car right now and drive you to Baltimore blindfolded and let you get out and you will not know you in Baltimore. You get in, you get in towns and, and all them kind of places like that. Big homes, plenty of businesses because they choose the best part for themselves while right? they keep the masses of the people i.e. African American, Latinos, etc. blind because they don't submit to God. And God says, for the believers who are active in deeds of charity. So I wrote down this. The believer is not a selfish person. They pay their share of zakat <clears throat> without constant Reminders. The believer is always looking for an opportunity to do good. Good always overcomes evil. Nothing comes from good but good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only Except good. When we was coming up in the early days, that's that's one thing that we like now. And this is why, for lack of a better term, this is why Minister Farrakhan's followers, the Nation of Islam, were kicking our butt in the demon. Because what we had then, and what they are being encouraged to follow now, is that they they they, they we had we had we had discipline. See, that's what we, that's what our people lack. Like, our people, period. Now, even one that was started over fifty years ago in the thirties. I mean, over the, longer than that, the Almighty Muhammad understood that our people lack discipline. We 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 couldn't rationalize. We couldn't think. We 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 we, we weren't rational thinking people. We had we had then and now 
we, we had the wrong priorities. So he had to put our priorities in place first. The first thing he did was teach us to stop worshiping white people by, by, by telling us about the images on, on the cross. And he told us in the lesson, they love the white man because the white man gives them nothing. Didn't you, Abdullah? Yes. Say, say, our people love the white man because the white man gives them nothing. Wasn't giving them nothing then, and he ain't giving you nothing now. A white man can be less educated than you and get a better job than you. A white man can move into any kind of neighborhood he wants to that they'll deny you living in the same place. A white man can go in the bank and put a loan out with a score, credit score and yours can be better than his credit score and they'll still deny you. Call redlining. Because they know how to choose the best part of their self and, and make money available to them because they know education and money will give them influence. And you can't show no group of African Americans no consequence that had no real influence. And when he do have any kind of influence, he got to act like a white man. He got to talk like him. He got to have the same talking points. He got to have the same belief system. He can't be no independent thinker. Because if he do, he, he, can't, he can't be successful in, 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 their, in their system that they have already set up. If he get on the news, if he's a news anchor, all he can do or she can do is mimic what the white man untold him. If they deviate any kind of way, job is cut. If they get any kind of personal opinion, don't have no more job. All your smiling and grinning and your hair done, your nails done, and the bow tie on and the suit, your know, house living in Potomac, that ends if you can't report this information the way that we have edited it and censored it and tell you to report it. And we want all stations to be consistent. This is, this is what happened. Well, I don't know if that didn't happen. It, it, it did, what, what's the problem? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are, you, are you going out there now? And, and are you going out there now and say what we tell you to say? Or you're going to have your own mind and lose this $100,000, $200,000 anchor job that you had. And 99.9% of them are going to go out there and do that job and tell you whatever the networks, the corporation, the big business people tell you. Tell, tell, they, they tell you. And that's what we, 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 we're dealing with. And then it goes on to say, these believers... They abstain from sex, except with those joined to them in the marriage bond, or the captives whom their right hands possess. For in their case, they are free from blame. And, 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 if, and if that ain't a big problem among our people, obsessed with unlawful sex. Probably buy more prophylactics than any other, other, other group do. Got them in all the black neighborhoods. Because in every black neighborhood, you got a liquor store, a corner store, or a gas station full up full of, 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 of uh, what's the term? Full of uh, uh, merchandise, but that's not what I want to use. Full of stuff that's, that's all used for, for vice. For vice, mm -hmm. you know. Prophylactic, cigars, cigarettes, you don't, you don't go to the corner of the you go, you go in the black neighborhood, it's a liquor store. You go in the white man neighborhood, it's, it, it, it's, it's wine and spirits. I look at them, I see them. Real neat, but one here, one there. And I, and I neighborhood every corner, liquor store, check cash, num number plan. Now, you know they got a plan for you. When they operate like that, they got a plan to keep us as African Americans and other minorities, they got a plan to keep you in your place and keep you down. Because they know if you're dealing with vices, you, you can't compete with nobody if you're dealing with vices. <coughs> it tear your it tear your, your health down. It, it mess up your mind. It fog it falls your mind. 
it, it destroys your thinking. If you're smoking and drinking and gambling and womanizing, you, you can't compete with no clean cut person. You can't even compete with a monkey. That's all he eating is bananas and vegetables. You can't even compete with him. You start running through three blocks and you out of breath. You start having to move some furniture around. You can't even move, move the furniture around. So they know this and that's how they're using what they're using to do attrition to destroy the minority people. And the biggest consumers, and I'll be telling you if you don't know, the biggest consumers are African Americans. If African Americans stop consuming one day, a red flag will go up. If they stop going to the shoe store, they stop going to the Safeway or Giant, the red flag will go because the majority of all customers when you go in the store is you. And, and because it's you, you get the worst service. You go in a so-called Caucasian white neighborhood, you get, you, get, you get the optimum service. Short lines, professional people. You go in our neighborhood, they're chewing, chewing gum, running their mouth, talking about this, talking about that, kissing babies, talking about the Redskins, everything besides miss. Why can't you ring up my order? But you ain't got to go through that when you go in these neighborhoods where people are intelligent and sophisticated. And that's where you will find the white man. Because he picked the best part for himself. The further you drive away and go to him, the better deals you're going to get. Because I know I buy and sell all the time. And I prefer to deal with white folks. Because they got enough intelligence and respect to look at me and see, well, this looks like a matured man. They don't even know my age or whatever, but they don't teach you and talk to you like you're a child or a boy. Open, and they don't and they don't waste your time. So, sex, as we close it out, the prophet said his greatest fear was that men would be overcome by sex and money. Those two things will bring down the average man. And how many times have you seen big politicians and big time people in show business? And, and, they, and they fall because they can't control <coughs> their sexual desires. So God said the believers, they abstain from that. Except with, 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 with those who are joined to them in marriage bond. <coughs> and the prophet said, peace be upon him. He said that when a man has sex with a woman, she becomes his wife. All his hell. Then that made that made us plain. He said, when a man has sex with a wife, with a woman, she becomes his wife. All his hell. And the prophet said, Peace be upon him. When you have sex and you are not married. You are not a believer. Until you stop having unlawful sex, then you become a believer. Now, ain't that mercy? Hey, it's human nature to have sex. It's human nature to be around a woman or a man, and, 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 and naturally, you, you, are, you, you, you are attracted to them. See, it's human nature. You think you got to tell God that? That's how God made you. He made you to be a normal man. You're going to eventually want and need a woman. He made a, a normal, healthy woman. Eventually, she's going to need a man. But, but, but there's requirements. There's rules. There's laws that you have to uphold if you're a believer. Right? And Allah says in the Quran, do not go near unlawful sex. See, you know you're human. So you don't supposed to be in a room with the opposite sex by yourself. Too long. Because the prophet said when the two are together and they're not married, the third party is shaitan. 
exactly it is. Saying the shaitan whispers into your ear and it whispers in to her ear. And what you think gonna happen? I don't care who you are, how strong you are, you can have a PhD or whatever, you're gonna fall to your knees. And that's what happens to him. Happened to Bill Clinton, happened to Gary Hart, happened to this one, that one, they all fall down because they cannot overcome this, this natural drive. They can't put it into the right context. And the only context is that you're a believer. And you will take precautions so you don't have to go out and buy no prophylactic. A man that's married, got a halal woman, clean woman, permissible woman, he don't need no prophylactic. That's only for the players, the studs, people in the street. A believer ain't got to walk up and say, What's your best prophylactic? That's for Negroes in the street. Hustlers, gamblers, thieves, liars, corrupt people. All that stuff they got in there is for, for, for corrupt people. Cigarettes, liquor, all that. Gambling, all that stuff is in there is for people that's corrupt. You go to the gasoline station window, if you're a believer, and you've got to get something, you can say, give me five worth of gas. And, and you break away, you go, you go. That's all you want. You ain't sitting in the window looking at you got a chocolate uh, 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 chocolate cigar. Now give me a strawberry. Give me a peach one. Believers don't do that. But they have control over themselves. So then in the it, it says, those who faithfully observe their trust and covenants. A covenant means this is Imam Muhammad's language. A covenant means a sacred agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, you, 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 you have a, a, an agreement with God that once you become a Muslim, once you evolve into a believer, then you made a sacred agreement with God that you're going to carry yourself in a certain kind of way. And buddy, when you do that, everybody will see you, you ain't got to open your mouth up. They they gonna know, cause you when you in their presence you gonna you not acting like a clown. You not talking unintelligible. You not acting ignorant. You not walking the wrong kind of way. You not walking through the street eating a sandwich with with, with, with mayonnaise on your mouth, or having an open container in, in 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 a bag, hiding from nobody but yourself. You not going up asking about do they have a fifty cent cigarette. Or a, pack, or a pack of cigarettes. They can look at you. You're not jumping in front of people. You're not driving all reckless, blowing your horn, and driving all behind people. See, they can look at your life and see something different about him, something different about her. And, and, and what they see is, they, they, they see the work and life of a believer. Because a believer illuminates prophet said when they see one believer, it's like them seeing ten believers. But when you see them, all you see is one person. So they know you're a believer. And they'll ask you, son or sister, are you uh, so and so, so and so, so? I've been asked without saying anything. They say, uh, are, you, are you a religious man? Yes. Uh, are you a leader? Yes. They'll ask you that. You see, I, I, I could tell. Because of the way you carried yourself, I knew, for lack of a better term, that you was believing in God. Did you go to church? Now, my mother went to church, but I'm a Muslim. I go to the mosque. I go to the mansion. Oh, okay. I understand that. See, you got your chance to be direct. Don't be mumbling and stumbling. Let them know. No, I don't go to the church. My mother went to church, my sister go to church, but God bless me to be a Muslim. And Allah said in the Quran that the day will come when every one of them will wish they were Muslim. That's the Quran. So the day will come when every one of them will wish that they were Muslim. You don't have to wish that. You are already Muslim. Now what you got to wish is that Allah bless you to be a believer. Because for sure, the Muslim 
and the belief, they ain't the same. That's why they're two different words. And that's why Allah mentioned in the Quran numerous times, way over the time that he mentioned Muslim, he mentioned the belief over and over again. Ayah opened up, or some part of Ayah says, Yeah, I you have the deen of And that, in English, that means, Oh, you who believe. But in Arabic, it means, Those of you who believe, those of you who have faith, and those who trust God. See the difference between the Arabic and the English? Amina. Amina, that one word. Yeah, I you have the deen of Those of you who have Faith, belief, and trust in Almighty God. And trust will give you patience. You don't have to complain when you're having a problem. You just got to make your du'a, and you got to wait until God answers your du'a. And he's going to answer your du'a in this world or in the next. But it's going to be answered. Because Allah says, save me. Allah who live in Hamada, that he answered those who call on him. And guess what? Imam Muhammad said, he don't, he, he, he don't, he don't have to wait for you to call on him. He, he answered, he going to answer it anyway. He ain't, he ain't slept until you calling on him. God don't have to wait. He already know your situation. He already know your, your pitiful predicament. He already knows your needs. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your desires, your designs. So he don't have to wait for you to save me, Allah, who live in Hamadan. You don't even have to think it. Allah is, Allah is over all of that. Not subject to any human limitations. So lastly, it comes to the end. It says, and who strictly guard their prayers. Because the believers always conscious about Salah. Salah. Always looking for the next Salah. Because he or she knows that she has sinned. And every time you make your Salah, your previous sins are, are, are wiped away. And when you come to Salah to Juma, like you should, especially on time, and don't make any sound, then the prophet said, that the see the, the, the sins that we Allah forgives all those sins in three additional days. So what you said or did, small things you said or did for the last ten days, when you come to Juma and you sit listen to the kutbah, then Allah forgive you for those sins. So always sins are being forgiven. Five times a day you make it a lot. Hopefully. Oh prophet of God. Why we make five prayers? What would that do? If you had an ocean in front of your house and you bathe in that ocean five times a day, would you be clean? Oh yes, oh my soul God. Well, if you make your prayers five times a day, there won't be no sin on you. That's the principle. That that's the that's the logic. Because you're sinning, you make you laughing, you're joking, you you tell a little lies. Your, your intentions are not to do that. But it's human nature. That's how Allah created you. So he says, if you don't sin, then he will destroy you and get some other people that will sin. So they can ask for his forgiveness. And he loves to forgive you. If your sins were as high as, as, as a mountain, and you add another mountain, not too big, Allah said, he will forgive you. The most important thing is your intentions. What do you intend to do? If you strap a gun on in the morning time, and you're not a law enforcement person, your intentions is to hurt somebody, to kill somebody. So that's what you're going to get. But if you got a license to carry a gun to protect yourself for various reasons, and you're trying to avoid everything you can, but if it comes down to you got to protect yourself and your family, then you got a right to do that. Because you're near, your intentions are right. You come out trying to be a decent person and you happen to fall into something, a slip, that's understandable because it's human nature 
is already inborn in you because our first father, Adam, he slipped. That's the indication that you will slip. But God in his infinite wisdom and mercy, when Adam, peace be upon him, called out to God, God forgave him. And when you slip and call out to God, God going to forgive you. The same way. Because that's part of God's small part, small part of God's mercy. Him forgiving you and I. Small part. He says he saves the rest of it for the next life. You can't say, you can't stand all of God's mercy right now. It'll give you a little small part. And, and, and buddy, daddy give you some relief. Because there'll be times will come in your life when the Lord try you and all oh, buddy, don't think you ain't going to be tried. Or you're going to be tried. How we know? Because God said, don't think you, you're going to be in this world, in this religion, and not be tried like those before you was tried. With, 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 with hunger, with loss of lives, with money, with losing children, you're going to be tried the same way. And you're going to make it if you are a believer. See, that's the key. Our mukminun, the believers. Because after how mukminun, the believers are already successful. Why? Because God gave you all of the formula on what you should do to be successful. Give you a test, and how are you going to go on with it? The instructor give you a test and give you the, the exact answer to pass the test. All you got to do is cross off the thing. That's how easy God made it. He didn't give you nothing that's going to be a, a problem so difficult that you can't make it and, and live that way as a human being. It's easy to be a believer for the believers and it's hard for a, the disbelievers to be believers. That's why the prophet said that this world right here, out here, this dunya, out in the world, don't you want to do and drink and whatever you want to do. He said it's a paradise for the disbelievers. He said, but it's hell for the believers. Believer don't want to don't want to be around all that, don't want to be around this kind of stuff. Believe it as a focus. Come out, take care of their business, and then go, and go on back up in, the, in their house. That's what the non-average believer does. The prophet, he came out early in the morning. You could see him coming out early in the morning. And every evening, you could see him headed on back in, 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 inside the house. And he said, don't be out in the street at night by yourself. Now, you, now Captain Hughes got to tell you that. Captain, Captain, uh, Captain Lena. Holy Chief got to tell you that, don't be out by yourself. The prophet said that long before she was even born. See, because it's common sense and intelligence. He said, come out in the daytime. Like God said, the daytime is the time for making progress. And the nighttime is the time for rest. See? See, see the logic? That's, that's God talking. And that's what the prophet did. Came out in the morning, at nighttime, he on his way to one of his wives' house. Whichever one was their turn. That's where he was going. And one of them wanted to forget their turn, forego their turn for another one. And then, okay, then, then, then I'll do that. But, but, but it's your turn. If you want me to go to another one's house, then, 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 that's, where, then that's where I go. Because I know my job is... And God going to hold me to it. I got to treat all of you right. If I got more than one, I got to treat all of you the same, all of you right. And whatever you need, I got to give it to you. I can't frivolously go out and marry another woman just because I want to be with another woman. I got to have a specific, intelligent, lawful reason to do it. And then it's permissible. Not just arbitrarily. Because God said you can have more than one. Yeah. For a specific reason. Because the woman got children and don't have no husband. That's a good reason. A woman don't have no way of taking care of herself. That's a good reason. A woman can help you in what you're doing and help herself. That's a good reason. But arbitrarily just going and getting one or two and three or four wives, that don't make no sense. And God never said anything to you that didn't make no sense. 
That's that's human weakness, you know, and 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 uh, and uh, lack of understanding, and uh, and greed because you're taking on more than you can handle. And then this is what the prophet said about these Juma, and talking about the believer. He said that uh, if you miss three Jumas in a row intentionally, he said your spiritual light will go out. That's why you don't see a lot of them here, because they neglect the Juma. They don't have no respect for the Juma. And when your spiritual light go out, you no longer have the appreciation for your deen. See, because the day of Juma is the day and time of enlightenment. So you have to be rejuvenated. You can't just do it on your own. Every Juma that's the represents the birth and time, the creation of Adam. Adam represents your human intellect. Not a physical person, but a type. But it represents your human intellect. So every Juma, every Friday, you have to have reborn, rebirth your intellect. And if you don't, the same way Adam died on Friday, your intellect dies on Friday. So if you keep missing Juma, it messes the highest part on you, your aqua, your mind, your brain dies. And you no longer have appreciation for the demon. So after a while, you keep making excuses, keep making excuses, and you just stay out there. And then you go back in the darkness after you've been in the light. And that's what you see around here. They keep trying, they keep trying to do it, but they can't. That street has the influence over them. Shaitan is their God. Because when God called them, they hear it. And it gets weaker, weaker, and fainter, and fainter, and fainter, till the time come when they say, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do it. I just can't do it. And the, and the reason I can't, I ain't gonna do it because I know I ain't doing right, and I, and I know I don't want to do right. So I ain't, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna disgrace the sacrament of the Masala, of the Mars, because <clears throat> I know I'm dirty. And we all dirty. That's why we're trying to get clean. So we all do it. That's why the prophet said that we pray five times a day so that we can get the dirt off of us. That's the whole point. But when you don't even try to do that, you can't make it. So we're going to close with these uh, hadiths real fast. I don't, don't want to go over the time that much, but we want to put everything in perspective. We said, we said, I hope we said more than enough for the believers. This is what this hadith and the sayings of Muhammad, peace be upon him. He says, whoever loves to meet God, God loves to meet him. God says, I fulfill the faith of whoso puts his faith in me, and I am with him and near him when he remembers me. And I'll read the last one. God says, whoever does one good act, for him are ten rewards, and I also give him more to whomsoever I will. And whoso does an evil, his punishment will be equal to it, or I forgive him. And whoso seeks to approach me, one span, I seek to approach him, one cubit. And whoso seeks to approach me, one cubit, I seek to approach him, two phantoms. And whoever walks towards me, I run towards him, and whoever comes before me with the earth look full of sins and believes solely in me, him I come before with the front of forgiveness as big as the earth. Let's pray for them. Let me do our God, we're that team that fit in the house of the tent. I feel like I could tell the house of the tent. I'm not having a super hand of a big head of a building. It's happy on my yes, a fool. I saw a moon. I love us. I'm doing a lot of that, but I didn't mean I came into some help. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu wa la alayhi wa la. Ashadu anu Muhammad wa Rasulullah. 
Hayya la salam, hayya la falah, kata kami tu salah, kata kami tu salah. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Takbir. 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 Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You want to go? We can't believe it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. 